and welcome to the AEW Dynamite Review. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by another one, Dolly Boys, Michael Hamlet from What Culture, here to review everything that happened on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Uh, <laughs> where we do daily wrestling podcasts where we not only review AEW Dynamite, but also AEW Collision, Rule Smack, and the show formerly known as NXT 2.0. Oh, oh pay-per-views, premium live events. We have interviews, roundtable discussions, and a roundup that we complete with a bigger quiz, of course, on wrestle culture. As I said, though, joined by Michael Hamlet to review last night's AEW Dynamite. Great to have you back, mate. What, this? It's a wristband uh, that's going to be available at our live show. Oh, my God. This weekend. Thank you for asking. Um, they're very affordable prices. I'm not 100% certain on, but they're going to be all available, along with all the other merch that's going to be on sale at our live show, because AEW is in the UK. Oh, my God. They are here. And evidently, um, the UK is glad to have them. We're obviously all super excited to get to London. I think, like, if you're watching or listening to this from the UK at this point, you'll be getting ready to start your travel. Oh. Uh, there's going to be all sorts of stuff happening. It's going to be the UK's WrestleMania for a bit, and then next year it's Dallas, and then it comes back again, but there's going to be all sorts of stuff going on. And no then matter how you get in there. <laughs> he wasn't my car! It's gone well already. Mm. It's just nice to be back Eat here. some British food, you know. Bit of uh, Weatherspoon's breakfast as Mercedes at. What the? With bacon, hash brown, and... Egg! What the hell was even there? These nuts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thing is, that Weatherspoon's, that, like, sort of... Weatherspoon's plate there. You press the button. <laughs> She's gone onto the app. <laughs> And <laughs> yeah, she's got on the app. Yeah, go on. She's picked those individually. Oh, moment. Moment. You learn from a professional, oh, shouldn't okay, she? Yeah, okay. You can't get that breakfast. What? What? Are you, I, you just and I mean, <laughs> folks, where's the lie? anymore no dear that's wrong <laughs> it was an absolute shambles that breakfast, are we on it <laughs> are, we, this, are we started yet it's just like your dynamite feed kicking off with like the ring announcer coming out i'm like oh god i was so confused watching that this morning i was like bit, bit of a flat opening to dynamite and then i realized it was like the, the oh god just before and with uh, apologies for how this has started we're very giddy and we're very excited i'm Particularly excited because it's nice to be back today. Had a family holiday, so now it's out of the way. I can finally look forward to my holiday, which is this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> That's just demonetized now, so all of this is for nothing. Oh, we are. Right? <laughs> That's brief enough. <laughs> just do them. Just do all the buttons, yeah. and then we can talk about oh, that. Just, just. Money. Money. <laughs> it's. We're buzzed for something. Anyway, we're, yeah. we're really excited. These, what these, <laughs> what these, they're available along with the merch that's going to be on sale at our live show this Sunday at the Crystal Club. Tickets still available, whatculture.com forward slash tickets. You know all this by now, but I'm really only saying this as a lead in to say Dynamite in the UK for the first time mm. was weird, right? Because it was strange, wasn't it? it? Like, I've got memories. I got thrown, sorry, quickly, Go sorry or interrupt. I got so thrown yesterday with... Um, the Panda Blair himself, Adam Blair. Yeah, I got a notification because he tweeted us about Ladies' Night, but it was like you know half seven at night, yeah, and yeah. I was like, "What's going on?" And I was like, "Of course, yeah, they're not going to wait. They're not the UFC. They're not going to wait until one a.m. UK time just to do a normal show. They're not going to wait until one a.m. to do a normal show." But we have been spoiled of late by the. Um, I'm thinking of the France and uh, what was the other one. Scotland PLEs from mm -hmm, WWE yeah. and all in last year, obviously taking place at our time and just thinking, oh, that must be maybe ITV4 will get Dynamite on live or something like that. And it wasn't able to come together. So it wasn't like we could experience it like those shows, which was a bit of a shame. It was also a weird time and place. Not Cardiff. Cardiff's an amazing mm -hmm. wrestling city. Got to experience a bit of that with Clash at the Castle in 2022. But it was just, I think... It was history being made, like the first dynamite in the UK. With this, we've got a bit of a 
chip on our shoulder, our Mr. Bean looking ass shoulders mm-hmm. about our relationship with wrestling. I think we've made no secret of that in the past. You really have to invest if you're over here. It's on at daft times in the morning. It's not often on the most easily accessible services. That is thankfully changing with the likes of ITV and with the likes of Netflix getting WWE. It's becoming, it's never been more straightforward for people to enjoy wrestling, but typically it's beyond high price satellite dish yeah, offerings, yeah. whatever. You really have to commit to this thing over here, even more so than you do. It's like on a Monday night, you put the USA, where the hell's Raw gone? Like that. <laughs> it's just harder over here. So we've always got this like real passion for it. And I think back to the TNA tour, um, well, the TNA tours really in the late 2000s through to the early 2010s, where they were on free to air channels like Bravo and Challenge TV mm-hmm. here in the UK. So they like, sold five to 10,000 seats in these buildings, filmed weeks of televisions, gave you house show experiences, the likes of which you'll never forget. I've talked before about sitting next to Dixie Carter at one. Mm. And like, and people have all these experiences from their house shows. It's like a real, so you would talk about the NXT 2015 tour. People that were there speak so highly of what that did for TNA's brand and how people felt in the UK. So it was a little bit odd when AEW were like, yeah, well, TV, Cardiff. Buy it. <laughs> and then people didn't really. They put the prices really high. So that like people's enthusiasm for it was a bit tempered because they were looking yeah. on the tickets. It's like, I can't really afford to do that. I've got this London trip and I can't go via South Wales. You know, we would have loved to attend, but it wasn't something mm-hmm. we could logistically yeah. do with London this weekend. I think a lot of people were probably in that spot. So going into it, it didn't have that sort of well, not for me personally and from what I sensed, necessarily the buzz of first time ever, huge, big mm. night watching it and in the aftermath. Couldn't have felt, couldn't have gone any better. A great go home show, yeah. Feels like it was a perfect go home show for All In. Really made you feel like for the next few days at least, the UK is all AEW. It's an AEW territory. So much of the, um, and I think reasonable and justified complaints about right, yeah, AEW got Wembley last year, and the number will be there forever. This year, fifty thousand people, yeah, huge number, in spite of a far more nuanced conversation about maybe how much that's down from the prior year, but how much can AEW really take over a city and feel like it's, or take over a nation in the case of the Mm. UK, and feel like it's here and it's all anybody wants to talk about in the wrestling space. And last night, I think in hindsight, turned out to be the perfect kickoff to it. They did get it right on Mm -hmm. the night where it mattered the most. Um, I welcome, possibly in the absence of a Wembley show next year, a proper tour. Yeah, exactly. A UK tour with time to get excited, with time to anticipate how shows if you want to do it, a TV tours, you could probably do back to back nights of a of a dynamite and a collision or something like that because they did Please both. Please come to Newcastle. Newcastle, we would love AW in Newcastle. Um but yeah, and like north in general, you know, like sort of Scotland and Glasgow, uh, or in like sort of the the, the kind of north like Manchester and Liverpool. Like there's so many places where AEW I think would still do amazing houses. Mm, oh, without a doubt. Ten thousand seater venues and the like. Um which again, Cardiff the relatively small. Yeah. It felt loud. So I it, this was the perfect all in primer. And that's what go home shows are supposed to be in general. And the show opened, the proper <laughs> bit that I saw finally was uh the contract signing between Britt Baker and Mercedes. Money. 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 Uh, Tony Schiavone hosting. Camille, of course, in Mercedes Money's well, corner, mm-hmm. and backing her up, basically. Uh, they've both agreed to no physicality tonight. Uh, Baker gets cheered. Money gets booed. There is some CEO chance, I will say that. Mercedes gets on the mic and says, let's just get to it. On Sunday, I'm going to make you tap out, uh, and everyone's going to know what I've been saying is true. You're the past, and I will forever be the future. But it says... That's cute. When I think of the past, I think of all in last year when you hobbled in on crutches to watch me. Before there was a CEO, there was a DMD. Uh, Monet not happy about this. Mocks the crowd, saying, oh, we only, you only like Brit because you see yourselves in her. Losers. That's why she won't beat me. Uh, keep quiet. You all paid to see me. Uh, Brit is my biggest fan, though, so she says this is her dream match. I inspired you, Brit. Um, but you had to get a little degree to fall back on. Nothing wrong with that, kids. Um, is she really all in? She's. I've been all in since 10 years old, says Mercedes. I've been putting women's wrestling on the map. That's all in. You ain't got the guts. You'll never be like me. Uh, and this Sunday, you will not beat me. Britt says, you want to talk about guts? I've got the guts. Uh, you had the guts as well and the heart and the balls. Uh, but 
So did I. I never had a plan B. I just had two plan A's. You're the blueprint. Well, I'm the gold standard. Uh, Mercedes, you might have been one of four. I'm one of one. I like that line. Uh, I'm the baddest bitch on the block. You're right. I did admire you. I wanted to be you. Um, you walked so girls like me could run. Uh, but then girls like me became the first female and foundation of this company that you're sitting in right now. Um, yes, Mercedes Monet made a difference, but that person doesn't exist anymore. That person's gone. Now you're a smug, arrogant a uh, You care more about being the highest paid female in pro wrestling than your own damn legacy that inspired the future like me. I don't know where that girl went, but I hope you find her again and fast because when I win, that's the person I want to beat. Britt stands up over the table and says, hey, Tony, don't worry. Chill out. All the rules. Promise I won't hit money. So she clocks Camille and she, uh, with the mic, she chucks a chair at Mercedes and hits a crossbody onto both of them. And the heels bail as Brit holds up the title and soaks in the cheers. Kind of a perfect no notes go home segment between yeah. these two. I know that the kind of the initial excitement around um, the Brit Baker Mercedes Money match, which was absolutely the right match to book, we said that from the moment Brit Baker returned, has been tempered slightly by the gap between the match getting announced and the show, where there was nothing else really to do. It was a marquee match without the two of them even needing to be on yeah. screen beyond that first meeting. And obviously, Britt Baker's real-life suspension and how that became the story more than... Yes. You know, we so often when we were talking about the whole situation with Brawl Out and CM Punk, it wasn't just about the individual players and the whole violence of it all. It was the fact that when the reality is so captivating, the fiction becomes less so. Mm. And that was what I think what they were in danger of happen, having happened here with Britt Baker and Mercedes Manet. And yet this made you forget about all of that. The idea that Mercedes Manet thinks that being a dentist is a fallback <laughs> option <laughs> is such a, like, it's such a brilliant in-character bit of ignorance from the Mercedes Manet persona. And yet, you can also buy that her all-or-nothing attitude towards wrestling is real and is earnest. We've seen her talk at length about that, as Sasha Banks in WWE before, about this being the one dream, and all she was prepared to do was follow it. So it's that kind of perfect thing of a heel saying something that is ludicrous out of context, but you know she buys it and believes it, so it works perfectly as a heel line. Similarly, Britt Baker, who is, I would say, probably a more natural heel promo, yes, is far better even as a babyface, talking herself up than talking about the soul of AEW and uh, I, you know, I built this place and all that. I get that as a... It's a, implied, isn't it? Yeah. It's one thing to have it as a character motivation, but it can't be the sole unifying thing. And this idea that actually make, being a dentist and being a pro wrestler and being the best wrestler in this company makes me a one-on-one -on -one versus you as a set of four was a really, really inspired pushback. <laughs> so they got the big lines right. They had that last little line in the Santa draw, and I think they did a really good job of drawing it. And contravening the um, contravening the no contact rule without really contravening it didn't just make Britt Baker smart, it put over the significance of what would happen later on yes. in another segment. So it was really well thought through in terms of like the rest of Dynamite as well. Yeah, really excited to see how this one goes on Sunday. Did you see the, the thing about Mercedes while she'd been away regarding her signing with AEW? She said basically she was going back to WWE. She went to a gig. Oh, no, she went to the Rams game at the SoFi Stadium, knowing mm. that obviously Mania was going to be there. Yeah. And she said, yeah, I think I need to be back here for Mania. And then Tony Khan invites her to All In. She goes. There's allegedly no discussion of contracts or anything. And like halfway through the show that you were at, mm -hmm. um, she's like, bloody hell, 80,000 people going this rabid. I didn't think you could get that outside of yeah. WWE and WrestleMania. And that's the moment she decided, yep, yeah, I'm coming in. I didn't know that, but I love that because I remember us having conversations like that about how significant last year's All In was. You had to, like, they took such a gamble to do that. And the gamble didn't just pay off for this one incredible night. It was making real this idea that you can be on a big stage and it not be WWE. They are still in the process of retraining, not just generations of fans, but generations of future wrestlers yes. to say... You want to be on a stadium this big? It doesn't just have to be there. Exactly. And I think, like, for someone like her who has had the WWE version of it already, that really puts over that that idea for sort of younger wrestlers or even someone like a Nick Wayne. Yeah. You might think, I'm just getting started. I have no motivation to want to leave. It'd be really interesting yeah, in the next five years because obviously you hear the people who say, look, growing up, you know, Javon Evans talks about watching like Lord Tensai and people like yeah. that. There will be people in a few years' time who say, mm -hmm. 
growing up, I remember putting the telly on and watching Darby Allen wrestle or whatever it may be. Yeah. Osprey, obviously. people in Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen, like kids yeah. in those outfits since AW launched. That's happening. We're in that now. And it's just really important AEW solidifies that. Mm. Some people might say, I grew up and I watched Chris Jericho. Speaking of which, uh, I'm Luring Tree. He's uh, backstage with Renee ahead of his match against Tommy Billington. Um, and uh, he's asked about his match tonight. You remind me of my father. <laughs> Jericho questions Tommy's right to call himself the Dynamite Kid. All he can say is he's blood related to his uncle. Yeah. That's, I think that's... Anyway. Not, not a bad line. Um... He says, Billington's not even good enough to be on Dynamite. At some point, I forget where he said it here in this promo, but he called it Cardiff England and yeah. got a great reaction. He what he was doing there. Yeah. Good stuff, that. Hope's Hook's watching. He's going to do to him seven forward years to Billington tonight, come Wembley Stadium. Um, and he storms off. Big Bill follows. And Brian Keith, who I really like, shouts, Big Ass Wembley Stadium! Yeah. <laughs> Brian Keith uh, is a joy, really, isn't he? And per a lot of... Uh, notifications in my ex last night so is big bill which i don't want to like i'm not going to spoil the result or anything like that but big bill hook um, yeah that was meant to be on i got so confused because i'm watching this show going well I, immediately after this match yeah i went well i guess <laughs> big bill hook's not hook's not happening i was like i swear i did because me, me and scott previewed it yesterday by the way it's well worth checking out the preview from yesterday with me and scott because we don't just preview down while we talk about his love for aw and you know his background as a fan is mm. so interesting to be sort of out. I know he's you know involved in What Culture Gaming, obviously, What Culture Gaming podcast, wherever you get your podcast from. But he's, yeah, he's looking at it from a fan perspective. So really interesting to get that. Yeah, well, fan perspectives are unique, I suppose, because uh, Big Bill and Hook was saved for collision instead. And per certain videos that have been sent online, um, the reaction that Big Bill gets as a baby face means that they're probably glad it's in the can because they might have to sweeten Hook a little bit because he basically became the de facto heel Ooh. in the building. Because, well, people in Cardiff have taste. People in the UK, UK wrestling fans, despite our Mr. Bean looking aces, mm -hmm. have the best and most discerning wrestling taste. Uh, that's why so many people want to be the number one wrestling podcast in the UK. That's why some of us have been in that position. That's why some of us just get a sticker and put it on the cover image and pretend they are. And that's why some of us are the motherfucking dirt men and actually get the spot. Because of people like you that continue to listen to him. Uh, yeah, it's one of them things where this Brian Key thing and Big Bill being Big Bill just are too likable yeah. to continue to boo. And if there can be one good thing that can come from the learning tree is that sooner or later, hopefully sooner, they just turn on him. And then what you're left with is two over baby faces. Do you reckon they're going to dress as the lads who did the Sycamore Gap thing? <laughs> Chop down the learning tree. We're not allowed to laugh about that, are we? No. Even though it is up here. So if anyone should be like, be allowed to oh, yeah. process our emotions. Like I can take piss out of my football team, but no one yeah, else can. Exactly, yeah. Not that I'd be doing that, of course, considering we smashed five in at the weekend oh, yeah. and beat Man City midweek. Did you see that? No. Chesterfield beat Man City in the midweek. Under Excuse 21s, me? but that doesn't count. All right. Uh, yeah. Beat one penalties. Ronaldo in goal. Ronaldo, but, you know, still. <laughs> still so, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm on the sick more gap now. I got asked about that by a family member at, like, a dinner a little while ago. And I think they were expecting me to sort of, I don't know, horrible, like, we were just... We were like trying to set up GoFundMe, and I just I was pat on it. I said, "Why don't they just three D print another tree? <laughs> What's the problem? Fix it, <laughs> <laughs> big tree, or just get Chris Jericho and stand up there for a bit." Uh, bef yes, <laughs> you, you go up there. Everybody wins. <laughs> Form all the fuzzy you want up there. The sick of Jericho gaff. Speaking of which, uh, Chris Jericho versus Tommy Billington was next. Never been there in my life. Never knew it was up here. Never heard anybody speak about it. I'm going to say about the Sycamore Gap. A lot of middle-class people down south <laughs> seem to know about the Sycamore Gap. Didn't see any of that Sycamore Gap National Trust money hitting at the boroughs of Gateshead. Did not. Hey, we had that lovely sign across the river, though, that was like, go with the flow or, or don't. Swim with the tide. In contradiction itself. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it? I'm trying to walk to work every day and being told what to do by your f***ing <laughs> corporate capitalism. You're not even telling me one message. Hey, go with the flow. Swim with the side. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. 
she looks like me daughter. <laughs> I don't fancy her, honest. <laughs> Rich Holland. <laughs> That'd be better. <sighs> oh, God, I don't have to waste some money, don't I? <laughs> What are we talking about? Uh, Chris Jericho versus Tommy Billington. Um, Early on, Billington gives him a Burnley wallet. No, he um, (laughs) drops him with arm drag, shoulder tackles, and a body slam. Jericho bails to the outside. Billington goes after him. Uh, Jericho takes the referees. He slides back in, and Big Bill just posts him. (laughs) Great. Go to a break. I think Jericho got on the mic uh, during the break because on my feed I could see that, but I skipped past it. I don't want to hear him. Um, <laughs> they come back. They uh, um, collide. Double crossbody. Um, Billington's obviously first up. Um, Jericho fires back, though, with a lion salt for two. Uh, nice bit of reversing. Billington hits a German suplex, uh, but Jericho sweeps the legs, gets him in the walls of Jericho. Billington gets to the ropes. Jericho waves to the crowd. Um, and that allows uh, Tommy Billington to hit a snap suplex and a tombstone goes up top. But of course, the uh, seconds there at ringside just distract him. He does a big dive onto Keith, sidesteps a charging Bill, uh, Big Bill, uh, gets rid of him. But unfortunately, in the time it's taken him to do that, by the time he jumps off the top, he leaps straight into a code breaker. One, two, three. Chris Jericho wins. He grabs the mic post match, calls Hook a stupid bastard, hopes he's watching. He says, If you were here in Cardiff, England, he does it again, mm-hmm. uh, I'd rip you apart branch by branch. Hook's symbols appears. He comes out, uh, gets right in Jericho's face, and then just gets nailed by Big Bill. Huge choke slam. Learning Tree stands over him. And then, yeah, they say, I'll oh, do that on collision instead. I am trying to be positive about this match at the weekend. So I went into this with a more open mind than I typically would a Chris Jericho or Learning Tree segment. The match, like, you can't not... It was really hot, by the way, in the building. It was hot all night, mm. and it was hot for this. Chris Jericho's still a star. A bunch of people, like, still want to see him. That's cool. You know, like, it does really, really does help on television when there's noise, and there was noise here. And I, he's not necessarily getting noise in America, and he's not necessarily getting positive noise when he does get noise. Tommy Billington might just only study tapes of his dad and that's it but his dad was good yes as a pro wrestler not as a man so not his dad uncle excuse me yeah, yeah. uncle but like like wrestlers will tell you watch somebody like the dynamite kid um maybe don't get too into everything he does but take what you think you can if you can perform it well and he did here like he sort of hung with Chris Jericho for various points and Jericho is and I'll say this for him and this is like I feel like I can praise him in good faith here because mm-hmm. this is something he's had in his locker for probably going on like 20 years for somebody that portrays the veteran or portrays the experienced one really well Chris Jericho is excellent at showing ass mm. oh yeah newcomers and up and comers and things like that he's always been really good at that He doesn't always follow it through and put them all the way over. The people don't necessarily escape the feuds with him or the programs with him in better shape than they went in. But within the body of a match, he's extremely good at looking under pressure from a guy that really shouldn't be giving him any bother. Yeah. And he did that here. And that you can't really ask for anything more than that. Uh, In terms of the hook build, I need a hook bat signal into the sky. Like it needs to, it'll go late in the show anyway, because Jericho wanted to do the Fozzie concert against a sort of duskier Wembley than the middle of the day. Um, with any luck, because it goes so late, it'll get a bit cut for time. Uh, I want the hook, bat signal into the sky. I'll see you at the bar. Yeah, and I want Taz to step up from the announce table and choke him out or something like that. Like some, something that yeah. just puts it above just Hook beating Jericho because Hook's beaten Jericho. Hook's beaten Jericho six months ago, Jeez. and yet here we are. So... I I feel like the Wembley match needs something special and will have it. Um, me and Scott yesterday had a little game because you know sometimes you have locals turn up on these sort of shows. Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's see if you can do this actually. It's time to play the game. Time to play time the game. Play the game. It didn't happen, but which Welsh legend did we randomly select to make an appearance on this show? Hmm. Tom Jones. 
was one of the names that Scott could have picked. He missed out on it. I, I googled, yeah, Welsh celebrities, and we scrolled through and picked some ones at random. Yeah, your Ian Rushers, your Ruth Jones, or oh, who oh. got got a mention later, sort of. Yeah, love Rob Brydon, love Marion and Jeff. Don't like Gavin and Stacey. Just putting it out there. Like Gavin and Stacey was a garbage Will Osprey. Name a better sitcom. I get it in Welsh, but um, one of the biggest Welsh legends. I'd arguably say as big as a legend as Tom Jones, without question. You were you were close. Oh, you were close with Ruth Jones in terms of gender. Right. Helps. Ah, um, Ruth Maddock from Heidi High. <laughs> No, but it was someone who could have worked really well if she had made an appearance. As Terrace well. Matthews. No, good guess, though. Um, I do My hope... you bitter son. Just hope... Uh, Sorry. You know, I saw Panda Blair went to this show. I just don't hope we didn't get too much road rage on the drive home. It's good. Mother and Scully. <laughs> uh, <laughs> X-Files. Huh? It would have worked quite well who we picked, though, for the next match, because the next match was uh, Times Tony Storm versus uh, Soraya. We picked Dame Shirley Bassey to make an appearance on <laughs> AW Dynamite. She didn't. <laughs> she didn't spoil us. Uh, but thank you, as always, to the panda by himself. Oh, my God. Uh, at, she hasn't at, got the range. At Adam Wilton 4, who, just for fun... Uh, in f- forever. Oh! Dynamite's forever for Adam Nicholas, ladies and gentlemen. And really I'm mad for her. She's kind of great, Shirley Bassey. You ever see her glass, you know, the Sunday afternoon? Oh, you haven't seen it. It's really, like, give it a look. Yeah. She's got the hits. Hits. But um, thank you. Do you know who, earnestly, right, this is like LTST. Do you know, I, I had this British comedy character's diary as a kid that I used to read and read over and over again, a Christmas stocking filler type book. And this British comic creation character... His, like, love, the, the person he would, like, send for autographed pictures or whatever was Shirley Bassey. Do you know which British comic character that was? Who? Mr. Bean. <laughs> All as Mr. Bean looking at us is love Shirley Bassey. He doesn't. Um, I also like the uh, image in my head of Adam Blair at Adam Wilton 4, of course. And give a shout-out, as always, to Jose Palomares at the Ho 11 on X. Um, sat or stood in the Utila Arena with a stopwatch. <laughs> but, but, now, because it was a women's match in the first hour. What? 27 minutes and 39 seconds. Have you ever had any of those mates that use a stopwatch to time injury time at football games? No. Mm. You don't go with them to the games much more after that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be the angriest, though, if the referee... Because oh. it's a minimum of. Mm-hmm. There's no set rule around. So, like, what are you going to do? Excuse me, ref. Oh, fair enough. Carry on. I've got this. Oh, uh... The scoreboard keeps going now. I do think that's helpful. Mm-hmm. Just as a fan, I like sort of seeing how much time we've had, but it's a minimum of. That's, uh, maybe he's complaining about Fergie time, but they were very clear in the stipulation. Indeed. Oh. Yeah. You got money, mate. Yours hat did it, did he? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Stopwatch. Yep. Um, Tony Storm versus Soraya. Stopwatch then. wankers in wrestling, let alone football. Cinema. Yeah. People at the cinema with a stopwatch. Yeah. Just James gone. The good, yeah. I've been to the cinema since Barbie. I went to see Inside Out 2 on oh holiday. God, why would you do that to yourself? Inside Out 1 ruined me. Oh, like it, they pretty much nail it as well with Inside Jesus. Out 2. My mate, te- he's just become a father. My mate text our lads group chat. that used to be all like, hey, we're all partying. Just text saying I watched Inside Out for the first time and I'm in a mess, lads. I was never like... A- Is it Inside Out's the one with the elephant? The Yeah. Oh. I was never um, like all the sort of Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, boom. Talk about it in wrestling terms. <laughs> like the boom period ha- like happened after I was like too old to go as a kid. Toy Story 1 came out in like 94, 95. I remember mm-hmm. going to the pictures to see that. Pretty much everything else. Like maybe there was a year where there was like, where the Monday Night Wars of a Bug's Life versus Ants. <sighs> but other than that, like I was just pretty much too old for all of them first time around. So having kids has been brilliant because I've been able to like watch them all yeah. first run and then 
watch them all 50,000 <laughs> times, so I feel like I've been watching them all my life. But it really helps you. Some of them are just a bit sentimental for the sake of it. They know how to do the schmaltz very yeah. well. So you will feel emotional, but then after the fact, you're like, did it really, did it earn that from me? You know, it's like we're, the same way we cover wrestling, really. Inside Out, I think, is mm-hmm. like elite tier. Champions League sort of tier. Inside Out, uh, I've, I've gone on record. I'm not afraid to say it. I think Sing 2 was better than any other film, full stop. Oh, yeah, you love that. Best Picture 2022. Oscar should have gone to Sing 2 for me. Um, second best sequel in all cinema after Ghostbusters 2. Probably mm-hmm. Godfather in third. Mission Impossible. Let's not put some respect on it. Uh, there was a trailer. Speaking of... How many Limp Biscuit songs are in uh, Sing 2? <laughs> uh, is there one? Please just, tell me if you just roll it in or something. There is one, I think, in a montage. I could be getting mixed up. The soundtrack for the Sing films is unbelievable, by the way. Um, is there a chocolate starfish in Sing 2? It's got animals in it, hasn't it? They're big. <laughs> just going to enjoy this hot dog play a bit of water. Um, what do you want? I knew what a pig was. It's been a while, hasn't it? I yeah, I've missed it. Um... <laughs> I was going to say something really important. Okay. That was what it was. Yeah, the Inside Out is a good example of like, oh, they're not all complete trash. No. They're actually really well thought through. It helps explain quite complex emotions. Genuinely, right? So we did a perfect Route 1 family holiday day when we saw Inside Out 2. It was Inside Out 2, uh, two games of Tempin Bowling, arcades, Pizza Hut. Oh, what a day. Yeah, I'm, I'm a good parent, despite what I may say on these podcasts. So we had this fantastic day and we're in Pizza Hut discussing, like, with our 8-year-old and 11-year-old through the medium of Inside Out 2, what anxiety is. Wow. And how, like, it, That's great. It's a genuine, like, learning aid. Like, it takes really complex ideas and breaks them down makes it dead simple. Other complex ideas broken down and made simple take place in the Moana cinematic universe, right? Ooh. Which is... It is goated. It is goated, right? But I'm not so sure if Moana 2's got the legs right because the trailer... Keeps it. I know what's happening here. <laughs> well, and for those that haven't seen it yet, like you're welcome for this non-spoiler review of it. Basically, Moana's like, it's kind of a bit of a lost, we have to go back. Yeah. Like if you haven't seen Moana, like a lot of stuff goes down, but ultimately she saves a day. And uh she's back on the beach, she's like, oh like, oh no, the the inciting mm. incident, as you say, back out again. And sure enough. Before the end of the trailer, you're like, where is he? I, f- I felt a bit like Adam Nicholas. I was like, where is he? <laughs> he's not here yet. And I know best. he's going to be in this trailer. Yeah, There's no best. way we get through a Moana trailer and he doesn't rock up, does he? And he rocks up right at the end. Oh, what a goat. And he holds Moana's chicken friend. Oh, yeah. Uh, here, here. I forget, yeah. Yeah. And he go, and it's basically the same line from the first one. The rock repeating his bit. Can you imagine that, Nicholas? He just goes, ah, butt snack, as he says in the first one. And then a pig... <laughs> Drops into his arms is a boat snack upgrade. Oh! Like, I'm thinking they give you a lot in trailers now. Is that the best you've got? <laughs> yeah, because I've not got. I've got some real doubts about Moana too. Like final boss is going to be in it. What's the problem? Well, this is it. Maybe like Moana's on the boat and he falls out with her and she's like sailing off and he's like off. It's the direction you can f- Moana. Well, they, they, Clifford, Clifford walked so uh, Moana too. Clifford could run. the big red bollocks. <laughs> Covering my kids' ears because Jack White swear in an American accent. <laughs> I did not expect that from the first AEW World Champion. No. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> take strips Look at off, you now! Take some strips <laughs> off the pig, yeah. Anyway, uh, Timeless Tony Storm turns Soraya inside out early on in the match. Moana's got like her own sort of, similar to like an Ula Fala. It's like the, the heart of the island or whatever. It's like... He's like, well, I want one of them. <laughs> it's like the belt of wrestling. Can I hold it? <laughs> I've got one too. He's like, well, what's the point of the film then? <laughs> I made one. You're welcome. Oh, that saves us two hours of a journey. <laughs> you can't just walk out with a belt. <laughs> I'll never forget that feeling. What's, what's that? <laughs> Everyone's got a belt now but Cody. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> oh, what a legend. Uh... So, Tony Storm Soraya for the AW Women's World title. Um, nice bit of cat and mouse from Tony Storm. Uh, gave up a leg. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Nice stuff. Uh, Storm gets the takedown. Soraya bails to the apron. They both scream at each other. 
Soraya hangs Tony Storm up in the ropes, takes the ref, and that allows Harley Cameron, who's, of course, out there to send Storm into the barricade. A nice somersault sent on off the apron takes us into a break from Soraya. Uh, Storm fights back when we come back from the, uh, from the ads. Um, I like the bit where she's sort of like wound up for a home run shot. <laughs> Soraya loaded her, she shouldn't put DDT there. Uh, Soraya gets out of Storm Zero, though, and hits a nightcap for a nice near fall. Um, Storms in the corner. Sunset flip power bomb into the good night cradle. DDT for two for Soraya as well. Storm hits a choke bomb, but Harley Cameron jumps up on the apron to uh, take the ref. Storm kisses her. Soraya runs in, collides into Harley Cameron. Uh, Storm old schools her, but um, Soraya kicks out. Big kiss again from Tony Storm. And the Storm Zero gets the one, two, three. Storm celebrates her victory, then suddenly is attacked from behind by Mariah May. Uh, he nails her with that shoe again. And she just clutches Storm's head and does the rolling around the ring to uh, to close this one out. I, the Tony Storm or Ryan angle was just fine. Um, again, they've done it all, haven't they? Really? Yeah, they have done everything. The brawls have been good. The brawls have given you uh, reason to get excited about kind of every version of the match. At, yeah, uh, at Wembley, actually, both the physicality and the fact they're going to bring their you know, cinematic characters into it. I think it's going to be the best of both worlds, genuinely. I think there's going to be a lot of the story-driven stuff that's made these characters pop in the way they have, but they just know how to lay it in. And it's going to, like, even in this running when she hit with a shoe, like, God, it feels like she is killing her with that mm-hmm. thing. And that gave you the call back to the, the first attack that kind of made all this as great as it was. Match was fine, actually. It was a quite a sweet love letter to not the old British style. Mm. The guys that uh, you need to watch to learn a thing or two in this business. Not for me, Jeff. I thought, well, the sport didn't age well at all when I watched the reruns on the wrestling channel. Save for a couple of guys. But, like, most of it is just, like, old fellas from down the pub tickling each other's taints. <laughs> like, I, it's it's just... And then and then there's a break for a, a round. You know, oh, yeah. I was kind of just getting into that. Thanks for... I used to be into rounds matches. I've gone off them recently, but I used to be really into them. i got to say. It's all about the stakes, but then you want to be fighting for like the biggest prize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. biggest um, prize in North America, if anything, probably. But the love letter to it, nonetheless, was quite sweetly yeah. executed. Fans were with it. And again, if you're going to do it, I suppose do it over here. Fans don't, get, like, a level with you, wrestlers. Tony Storm knows this better than me. She was, like, working over here from when she was younger. She's yeah. She's not, like, adopted one of us, basically. But, like, over here, we don't care about world of sport. Like, we have grown up with grandparents or parents saying, oh, you like wrestling? You mean like Daddy and Haystacks? No, I mean like proper ones, good ones from America. Like everything good, it's from over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was sweet all the same. And if this is all, if this is like Soraya's lot for this UK trip, like not bad, mm-hmm. really. I know she. I think like, she'll have something to do it all in. You reckon? Yeah, I reckon so. They've, got, they've just got pack on there, of course. Yeah. Spoiler. Spoiler! <laughs> Potentially. Moving on. Renee Paquette's backstage with the conglomeration. Uh, the word of the day is proliferated. Again, I'm not going to attempt the Mark Briscoe promise. It's no point. It's He's brilliant. awesome. So look what happened to poor Kyle O'Reilly when he tried, and then he tried talking British-like. Oh, oh Kyle. I mean, it's better than cool Kyle. <laughs> British Kyle. I miss him so much. Where is it? Hang on. Hey, Dijak. Take those stupid sunglasses off. We're inside. Wagner Watch. Come Tuesday. I knew you were going to turn on me, Vaughn. <laughs> Been aware of this for months. It's obvious. <laughs> um, anyway, Nightingale. I hope he's all right. Yeah. I'm Wagner. Nightingale's teaming with Ishii, of course, which is a weird sentence to yes. say. This is for who gets to pick the stakes for All Out, isn't it? They, the proper singles payoff is... Coming, mm. yeah, I think so. So uh, we're just not getting it, Wembley. It's on the kickoff amount. That's fine. Uh, then it was time for the face to face between the United States champion uh, and Will Ospreay. Couldn't have had more of a difference in terms of uh, reactions here. Huge pop for Will Ospreay, understandably. Yeah, uh, really soaks it in. The crowd just love Will Ospreay. He gets cut off by MGF's music, which Taz describes describes as a fart in church. <laughs> uh, he's MGF's got, jacket was amazing, wasn't it? His best yet. Oh my god! An American flag suit. Oh. Uh, Osprey tells the crowd as if they needed any encouragement. Give him a warm welcome. Boot him out of the goddamn building, basically. Uh, 
Will is shocked that a place like Wales loves an Essex boy, um, but he references Gavin and Stacey. Also really interesting, considering the amount of times we go like, and they reference the local sports team, I think, yeah. or a, a sports player or whatever. And we're like, hmm. The Americans I've seen online today going, what the hell's a Gavin and Stacey? Yeah. Who the, who the f*** is Barry goddamn Scott? What the hell is Clit Bang? <laughs> but he references Gavin and Stacey. Oh, I misread it. I see. It's a cleaning pro. It's cleaning produce. Uh, it references Gavin and Stacey. I understood that reference. Yeah. Um, talks about driving to Wales, wrestling in bingo halls. Last year, wrestling in a bar, filthier than the wife. I don't understand that. Did she not bath then or something? No. Um, I was chatting with the microphone okay. before we came in because I thought you might ask that. Mm-hmm. And he filled me in on it. Uh, sex. Got it. Yeah. Dirty in bedroom. Yep. They have they have sex. <laughs> they have full sex. And if you think it's just penetrative intercourse missionary, you're dead wrong. That's well, he, what he's confirming. He wasn't talking about that when he referenced cleaning up MGF's mess. <laughs> uh, me and Rafone didn't confer on okay. that before we came in, so I'll All throw right. it to him. Has he got an opinion on him in NXT star's name he could offer? He's still turning a bit, isn't he? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, you're going to go. Uh, he's, had it, he's had it like the busiest summer out of all of us, to be fair. Yes, he's yeah. the only, the only yeah, one. He's, he's the constant. Uh, but you might as well. <laughs> I'll remember that. We'll miss you when you go on a holiday, Nicholas. <laughs> Rafone's a terrible producer. <laughs> so the fans will be a black. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put him in the chat. <laughs> Turn the camera, man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got any limbs and also this voice is in your head. All right, Mike, if that's your excuse. <laughs> what voice would that be? Sorry, just, uh, can you, could you remember what, uh, he, uses, he uses a voice. I'm sorry, I'm just going to, I just realized my shoe's untied. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tie your shoe up. <laughs> Probably a Robert Stone's voice, if, if any voice. Uh, I don't know, how are you getting on with, uh, with your shoe down there? <laughs> Turns out, turns out we're in clogs. It's fine. Oh, good, right, yeah, yeah. Sidious <laughs> is some of the disturbance in the force. <laughs> That's, speaking of clogs, but not really. I thought it was a, um, an outlet mall. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to give a quick shout out to... Uh, to, uh, <laughs> big shout out to Clock to uh, SP Fan Twenty who says a lot of these dynamite reviews and previews have too much filler and too many tangents. One star, so um, stick around and we'll get back to the MJF. At Will oh, that, that's yeah, it's throwing me off again after. No, no, it's got clogs. There was a it was an outlet mall, and there was uh, a you know, and I guess new store opening or whatever, or at least you think it's that. There's a queue like snaking around the entire outlet mall. It was great because everyone else was dead quiet. Ghost town, all the other shops. A Crocs shop. It's <laughs> like, Crocs back. I've got my uh, Greg. Are they? I've got my Greg's Crocs for holiday, so I'm sorted. Nicholas, you're a very stylish man. Thank you. Crocs? Not for me. Never. Not for me. No. Never. No, that's it. I assume yeah. that as well, but I guess not. Yeah. There was somebody on the door letting people in one, like one in, one out for the Crocs shop. My mate Sparks has got a, it's got slipper Crocs as well. So, like, those slippers you can wear, you go outside if you want as well. See, in my mind, all Crocs are slippers. Yeah. Uh, you, got, you want a bit of cushioning in it. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Oh, you might as well call uh, Will Ospreay Barry Scott, because on Sunday, bang, and the dirt is gone. Nice. Excalibur. I don't know. MJF <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, talks about jam-packed arenas chanting his name twice as loud as they ever did for uh, Will Ospreay. And, of course, at that point, that point, the crowd drowns him out and tells him to shut up, basically. Yeah, you ever bought a silly bang? Because we all remember the adverts. I, like I, bought it as I, was mo- I must have bought it when I was like moving out of a flat and going, oh, bollocks, I want to try and get some of the deposit back. Like, remember the advert? Mm. Look what it did to this penny. <laughs> it's like, it's put that near my hands. <laughs> yeah. Good as new. Thanks, Barry. R.I.P. Is he? I think he's dead. Okay. If you're not dead, Barry Scott. Fall into a vat of... Um, I don't... No. Move on. Uh... 
He says, I don't have to be a flip merchant to get the job done. All I have to do is do this. And he poses like a kangaroo pop. Yeah. Uh, I came back from early, early from injury. I didn't know if you knew that, Will. But you want to know why? Because I was begged by Top Brass here and at w Warner Brothers to clean up your mess. You are a good little prick. Will says, come on, mate. Look in the mirror. Uh, I heard of this, promo this wrestling promotion where wrestling was the top of the game. Me and my mates turned on the telly. We didn't see that. We, see, we saw you and your mates tossing each other off, basically, during a pay-per-view. Uh, should have focused on great people going against each other, but you and Adam Cole were on top. Um, think about it, he says. Tony Khan's got 3,000 people signed back there. And I mean, <laughs> folks, where's the lie? And me nan. Uh, but he calls me. Uh, but he also says, please go put on a good wrestling match at Wembley because I can't rely on my world champion to do it. Ooh. Look, you're an entertainer. I don't mind it. But we're meant to be the alternative to cater to fans, to cater to their voices. This isn't just about restoring the international championship. It's about restoring the feeling of, bruv, I am the feeling. Um, Crowder olaying as MJF tries to fire back. He says... All this trash coming out of your mouth, Will, but you're right. You got one thing right. I don't care about catering to the people because they're meaningless. I care about one thing, and that's what Americans do best. Win. And God bless the United States. Or about him. No. Just a funny way he says it. Um, Especially him not winning, ideally. Um, what's so sad is... <laughs> is I actually believe that four-eyed, curly-haired, dork Tony Khan when he told me that the company would be safe in your hands. Who the hell are you? Everyone knows who I am, and they all agree he's the best wrestler I am. This is MJF on God's green earth. Who told you you were the best? These people? Ha! You know, nothing about wrestling. Um, be the feeling you want. I'll be the facts. Because the fact is... I'm the youngest and longest reigning AEW world champion of all time. The fact is I headlined and won the biggest show of all time. The fact is that when they talk about this generation of pro wrestling, I'll be the ace and you will. You will be second place. I hail from the only country that matters, the US of A. And you've only got one move in the chamber, most importantly. The only one you can use to defeat me. And you ain't man enough to pull the trigger. You can feel how you want, Will, he says, because I'm the facts and facts don't care about feelings. Will Ospreay, great, great promo there. Mm -hmm. Will Ospreay <clears throat> fires back and says, yep, yeah, you're all about the facts. Well, history books can be rewritten. What can't be rewritten is how people feel. You have never inspired a single person to want to do this. You go all over Europe, you go to Australia, New Zealand, you go to <clears throat> Japan, he does it in Japanese as well, and basically says, ask who the guy is, and they will say Will Ospreay. You go to America, go up and down this country, ask who the best in the world is, and they will say, Will Ospreay. I can't lose, not in front of my family, my wife, my kids. I know why you don't like me. It took you four years to get over MJF, and it took me four beats of my music to win over them. And MJF, the mask just slipped slightly as he yells, they loved me until you showed up. Mm -hmm. Excalibur says he's saying the quiet part loud. Tells everyone to shut up. You're right, I can never be like you. This great human being, husband, father, pro wrestler. In every way, I fell short to be the face of AEW, and you manned up, and you did it. But, and this is where you see the old MJF coming back. I spent some time with your wife and child earlier. I say so-called child, actually, because your wife was in a prior relationship and had a child with that man, and then you stepped into the picture and raised that kid like it was your own. But... And you think, oh, where's this going? MJF says, I've got one more fact. After the convo I saw, had with your wife, maybe the next kid she has won't be yours either. Oh, oh boy. Oh, my God. There it is. This is brilliant. This was brilliant. Um, long. Do you want to get to the brawl after this? you want to run through the promo? Get to Just the quick, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll break it up because this was long. Like, this yeah. sort of, they were given time here or they took time, whichever one it was, because um, the reactions for everything... Massive. Oh. They were allowed to linger on all the killer lines, of which there was tons. Um, and you articulated it brilliantly, but the point at which uh, MJF sort of gave the game away, and mm. at just the right time to do it, in the last words of the last segment on the last Dynamite before the big match, uh, couldn't have been any sweeter, because they've had a 59-minute, 58-second match. Mm -hmm. Everything that Will Ospreay is saying, he can do so. Uh, comfortably putting himself over as the best wrestler in the world. But we know 
that MJF can hang on his level. And yet, within the context of this little back and forth, he was building this brand new bridge. He was saying, like, I'm leagues above you. We're worlds apart. I do this because I want to have these, like, incredible matches that, like, define us as all elite wrestling. And MJF is sort of opposite him as the last man to do that with him. It's so yeah. inspired how he can make you forget over the course of this promo what they've already done. And it allows them to sort of wrestle f- as if from scratch. Yes, exactly. Wembley, despite what we've already seen them do to each other. Because what does that do? It shines the spotlight on the uh, Tiger Driver, which I don't think has been a story particularly well told. I don't think they've had Brian Danielson until later on in this show sell it enough. And yet come the night, cometh the moment. Oh, yeah. It's going to be absolutely huge. So they were. this was like multifariously effective at making you forget certain things while making you remember other details, only for then the mask to slip, as you point out, and for MJF to just reveal, as always with him, it's rooted in pettiness. It's rooted in his inner evil. It's rooted in his, like, nastiness and belief that he, him and only him can reign as the best, and none of these people he believes are on his level and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this was... Spectacular stuff. A top baby face, a top heel, some brilliant lines, and another reason why, despite all the kind of questions raised about what Osprey might do on this show, this was the right match yeah. for the right title. So he fires off that line about Will Osprey's wife and having a child with MJF, and Will Ospreay is fizzing. Mm. But he also has been told, as we mentioned earlier with the Mercedes Brit thing, no physicality tonight, lads. And he turns around, leans over the ropes, and asks Tony Schiavone, You got Tony there in your ear? How much? What's the fine if I turn around and chin this twat right now, basically? And uh, Schiavone clarifies 100 grand UK pounds sterling, mm-hmm. $127,000. Got the pounds a week against the dollar at the moment. Mm. From when you were a kid. It'd be 200, that. Yeah. We used to be a country. Anyway, he's considering this. MJF is like, you won't do a damn thing. He will. Yeah. Will just goes, well, it's worth it. Punches him. Uh, security obviously dives in, and they have the big pull apart, and everyone's separated by security. Uh, Osprey's chinning some of them as well, because they were surrounding the ring throughout this mm-hmm. entirety. I should have mentioned that. Um, but eventually, security all get their hands on him and hold him just long enough for MJF to hit him with the beautiful diamond ring. Busts him open, brain buster, covers in himself, counts the one, two, three, holds up the American title, and then thinks, that's him with a tiger driver. But before he can do that, more security dives in, and and Christopher Daniels, he gets a nice chat for himself as well, I thought Mm -hmm. it was lovely, um, to separate them, and MJF storms out at that moment. Again, heavy heat at just the right time. The blood uh, of Osprey, representative, I guess, not just of the fact that he got hit with a diamond ring, but this idea that uh, he, M. Jeff, is prepared to do to Osprey what Osprey won't do to him. The diamond, the diamond ring is his tiger driver. Mm-hmm. He'll bust him open. He'll make him bleed. He doesn't. Care. He'll like take the the cheap shot and the dirty trick. And the tiger driver is none of those things. And yet Osprey's empathy is such that he yeah. won't do this legitimate wrestling move. And it does again. It illustrates the differences, the key differences between these two as people um, at the best time to do it. And obviously we got the little Osprey moment later on. Mm-hmm. To we'll talk about it now, actually. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. So um, it was better late than never. This segment, I would say, it was just before the big, uh, the final showdown between uh, Danielson and Swerve. Renee Paquette's checking on Osprey, busted open, as you mentioned. He's being checked over by the doctor. She uh, asks its status for Sunday, but before we get anything, up walks Brian D- uh, Danielson to Osprey and just simply tells him, "Do it, do it," uh, and he walks away. Seemingly implying hit him with a tiger driver. Yeah. Great well, touch, this. Well, yeah, or do it as in, like, sex. So he has the second kid. Oh, that's yeah, that's a good point. We both couldn't. Well, no, I, t- I presume it's probably, you're probably right. It's probably the tiger. It's probably not sex. Mm. Probably or tiger driver. Or a reference to Dukes of Hazard, was it? Do it. Do it. The new one. Of the ben Stiller, one. yeah. Do it. Okay. Is that right? I'll put that on my watch list. <laughs> ben Stiller. Do it. <laughs> Darsky and Hutch. That's what I'm thinking of. Do it. We had to watch one of these. Uh, 
Mm. Yeah. American. Uh, Dukes of Hazard. That was remade as well. Yeah, it was Jessica well, Simpson. I remember, distinctly remember that. I'll say that either. Uh, he boots are made for walking. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Come on, boots. You don't want to do that. It's like ages to watch. Didn't need any encouragement with that music video either. Uh, right, Hangman Page is there with Renee Paquette. Speaking of cowboy. Uh, there's been an altercation earlier on, Hamlet, and he's been asked to leave the building. Mm. He's a bit grumpy, I don't know. Uh, she says, what's happened? He says, I did what I have to do, and now I'm in the casino gauntlet match. Uh, Evil Uno, poor bloke, walks <laughs> up. Mates, obviously, history together. Hey, Hanger! Uh, <laughs> Paige is like, do you know who else, anyone else is in that casino gauntlet match? And he's like, well... That's so funny you ask. I'm in it. I'm bloody, guys, Evil Uno is going to be, I'm so going to be in that match. Uh, and he's, she's like, I can't bloody wait in the back. <laughs> Hang on, Paige just loads up a chair and nails him with it. It's good stuff. He'll hurt anyone in the way of him and his route to swerve. He'll do anything. And then he drags his suitcase over him as well as he leaves. Poor bastard. Really good stuff. Um, Uno is such of the perfect character. Thanks for asking, <laughs> Hanger. <laughs> I'm in, and I go, oh, God. Couldn't have been happier, could he? Oh, this wasn't like a right out, hopefully, as well, and then Uno gets a bit of revenge on him or something. Mm. That'd be quite sweet if he gets that in the match. Uno reverse. That's all TGA stuff, that is. That is. Uh, He's more twice is winning that, so it doesn't matter. I feel like I might get what I want, which was not... Singles match between Hangman and Jarrett at Wembley, but them two facing off. Oh my god! In this sort of the exciting climax, <laughs> climax of the uh, Casino Gauntlet. How many? Do we know any? We know Orange Cassidy's in it, isn't he? Yes. We, it's just a few. We talk, I was clarifying this with you. And Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. Yeah, that sounds about right. I've got any other names here? Evil Uno. Evil. <laughs> He's out. Outrunners in. Oh, of course, it's a gut. No, it's just it's not a the over the top rope battle royal. It's wrap a, it in the first two potentially. It's Cassidy's like, number one. That's yeah, why the you advantage of having it. You get the first opportunity Sorry. to get the win. Um, and people, the idea is, is that in our head cannon there is just a line of wrestlers, and you've got your number. And if the pinfall happens, well, tough. Yeah, Cassidy first, and then in no particular order: Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, Hangman Page, and right now, at least according to Twitter, Eva Luno, and seventeen others to be announced. It's going to be terrific. Could it's be coming. Ricochet, maybe. <laughs> like, it's exciting. I'm, I'm, I love that they've put this on this Bobby card. Bobby Lashley. God, yeah, Bobby Lashley. I didn't even think about that. More available for now? I think so. His contract expired, didn't it? Interesting. So it's... Yeah. Uh, Beast more to us. Yep. Outrunners. People, people want him. Yep. People want them. Cole. Cope. Cope or Cole? Cope, Cope. Cope, Cope. I think Cope's going to be out. Yeah, Cope will be still injured. Cole. But, like, the opportunity to make a Wembley return, get a big pop and just... You? Yeah, that's what I'm Miro? Yeah. Wardlow? Yeah, interesting, yeah. I was talking about him the other day when I was just talking to myself on the podcast. <laughs> Ricky Stacks? He is. I feel like there was something, I might have missed this, but there was some gossipy stuff about his contract, I think, of late. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. It's wide Cannot open. wait for Sunday. It's wide open. Uh, and we got another title match, the Continental Championship on the line. Kazuchika Okada versus Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, holy sh- chance straight away. As, uh, I must catch up on the preview for this one. It's got to have a not the biggest Claudio fan. Um, they trade finisher attempts. Nice stalemate early on. Uh, Okada hits a back elbow. <coughs> oh, no, builds up ahead of steam. Sorry, gets hit with a back elbow to take us to a break. Um... Claudio, after they come back, blocks a tombstone and they crash out to the floor in a big heap. And Okada posts him ahead of another picture-in-picture. Picture. We come back. Claudio hits a great uh, gut wrench slam and a running double stomp for a near fall. Goes up top. Okada drop kicks him, sends Claudio out to the floor, brings it back in the ring, wants a top rope elbow, uh, but Claudio cuts him off with uppercuts. He wants a superplex, but Okada headbutts him and hits that awesome John Woo drop kick. Finally hits the elbow drop. Sets up to do the Rainmaker pose and flips everybody off. 
Uh, but he takes too long as a result of that. And that allows Claudio to catch him with a 20 revolution giant swing. The crowd in Cardiff are loving this. Um, Okada comes back, uh, hits a great drop kick, sets up for the Rainmaker, but Claudio ducks and hits a springboard up. He wants the neutralizer, but Okada counters that into the air raid crash neck breaker. That was the moment that the ring announcer announced. One minute remaining. Mm -hmm. The crowd are like panicking, as are the wrestlers. They just start throwing uppercuts. Um, Claudio ducks a rainmaker, huge pop up uppercut, but Okada just clutches onto the double onto the ropes. Um, Claudio hits a double stomp, gets a two, but the time runs out. The crowd are fizzing. Great finish to this match. Time limit draw, uh, and that brings out. Well, the crowd are chatting for five more minutes. Of course, that brings out the young bucks uh, as well with Jack, uh, Jack Perry, who uh, say, "Wow, what a match! Phenomenal! Uh, who wants five more minutes?" And everyone, "Yay! We all know what this is doing." Yeah, come on. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to happen. The contract says a card has to wrestle twenty minutes, not twenty-five. And unfortunately, his EVPs they were sticklers for the rules. Before we move on, because this sort of bleeds into the <clears> next <throat> match, how did you uh, reckon to this? Because it was a lot of anticipation for this one. Loved it. Loved it. Um, a terrifically worked TV match, and I don't mean TV matches as kind of as a, a tacit neg no. the actual match itself. I thought they measured exactly how much they wanted to give you. It's obvious we're going to get a rematch, so you've kind of got to leave. So you've got to leave stuff, and yet mm -hmm. that giant spin and it on it being on Okada, and the longer it went on, the more you're like, you're spinning because it's Okada. Yeah, like it really did give you that sense, like. They effectively curated that title changes in the air vibe, which is crucial, isn't it, to like the success of a match like this. Uh, it can't just be that you're watching. This is the, the counterpoint to the Osprey thing. It can't just be, oh, the dream match, the cool wrestlers wrestling. You've got to invest. You've, stakes are so important. And this belt isn't exactly like a high priority in AEW. No. And yet, Claudio beating Okada for it suddenly felt like it was the most important thing in the world. So the wrestlers, as we should have expected from Kazuchi Okada and Claudio Castagnoli, got you to where you needed to be as a fan. I thought this was a really, really tremendous match. And I would have, if I was in that dynamite crowd, I would have left this venue, not just because of Jeff Jarrett's stealing collision, but feeling like I got more than my money's worth because I got a dynamite full of big, Capital M moments, all the stars, mm -hmm. everybody coming out and saying their last piece before Wembley and a match of this standard. Yeah, great guy. A proper takeaway AEW tier wrestling match mm -hmm. between two of the best wrestlers in a graphic that if you were going a week out, you can't believe the look that you're getting it. You know, the, the sort of thing that you're like, All right, well, that's getting saved for Wembley. No, it's going to be in a 6,000 seat of furnace or whatever it was. Yeah. And I love AEW draws when they feel earned. This one absolutely did. Can't wait for the rematch. It's probably Snuck all out. up on me as well, the but draw. The, the, yeah, the time limit, because you just, you're enjoying it so much, you're not remotely looking at the clock. And 20 minutes compared to some of like the longer draws they've had in AW felt like nothing. And also the sort of placement on the show, because often if they're going to do a draw, it's either like the main event yeah. or the opener, so they can balance yeah, the time it. properly. Just, yeah. This was like matches have gone 20 minutes or thereabouts in this slot, but the context is totally different when they're wrestling to a time limit, isn't it? So I don't think they could have done a better job with this, quite honestly. Mm. Okada... I think they are nailing this presentation, but I understand this divides people. I think it would have been pointless to bring in Okada as the best wrestler in the world because you are literally telling, you are calling somebody else that in Osprey. Yeah. I think having them split off and kind of going down different routes has been really smart. I agree. Because look at what you got in just 20 minutes here. Okada can be Okada like that. Yeah. He can turn it on whenever he likes, and he did here. And the fact that he will do it again when they have the rematch will only put over this belt, will only put over Okada, and then you get six more weeks of him saying, bitch, you get six more weeks of him being a mean guy that doesn't even want to tag in, and then you forget, just in time for another Okada match where he blows your mind. Yeah. Love this. Uh, so, yeah, they say, oh, only 20, 20 minutes, not 25, so that's not happening. Claudio, better luck next time, next time, but get out of our ring. Don't make us have to remove you. This brings out the team that they're going to be facing. Uh, Darby Allen and FTR. Big brawl breaks out. Claudio fights Okada to the back during all of it. But yeah, Darby Allen and FTR get into it with Jack Perry and the Young Bucks. Uh, Perry and Dax, I think, start us off. Darby Allen wants to come in. And of course, immediately Jack Perry's like, I don't want to hear that. Nicholas, in you come. Um, but Darby Allen just flies through the ropes onto Perry anyway. Um, FTR gets sent outside. Double dives by the Bucks. Um, but they take too long celebrating. And Darby Allen takes us to a break. Flies off the top with a coffin drop. Um, when we come back, 
Darby Allen's getting worked over during the boy well, he gets he's been getting worked over during the break. He also uh gets dropped with the buckle bomb double corner kick. Um Perry gets a near fall off the back of that. But finally Darby Allen gets out and gets over to Dax Harwood for the hot tag. He uh hits rolling Germans and a brain buster on Jack Perry, gets rid of the young bucks before that as well. They want Shatter Machine to FDR. Perry avoids it, the bucks come in. Uh but Cash Wheeler's now the one to run wild. Uh, gory special attempt on Perry, but the Bucks hit a super kick pie to break all that up. Uh, Wheeler ducks the EVP trigger and they bang knees. Uh, it all breaks down. Uh, triple, well, sharpshooters, scorpion death locks mm-hmm. uh, from FTR and Darby Allen. The elite gets the ropes and they're like, I don't want any more of this. Let's get out of here. But Cash Wheeler just flies through the ropes Amazing. on top of them. Uh, Darby Allen hits a code red, but Perry hits a scorpion death drop. Goes to that charging knee of his, but Darby Allen ducks. And uh, Jack Perry basically runs into a shatter machine. Powerplex on uh, Nicholas Jackson and Darby Allen hits the coffin drop for the one, two, three. Uh, Cash Wheeler trying to keep up with Darby Allen in terms of his pace yeah. and his dives and his impact stuff was so fun to watch. They will struggle, they being FTR, the Young Bucks, and the Acclaimed, to top this. Yeah. I honestly believe that. This was your year 2000 Attitude Era fed Raw main event and. The action was all the better for it. Mm-hmm. Really well agented around the two separate Fuads combining for one match. The snatches of action you got between the two sides and the desperation, especially from Darby Allen to get a jungle boy. I cannot wait for that match as well. Yeah. This all in card has got such fabulous range. You know where you're going to get the violence and the chaos. You know where you're going to get the stakes. You know where you're going to get the straight singles action. You know where you're going to get a little bit of everything. You know where potentially you're going to get massive spoiler popping up in this coffin match. Huge. Um, we talked about it on the news this morning, if you don't mind that spoiler. Good God almighty if this happens. Um, yeah. So, like, I just think, like, both... This was such an effective job of both matches. And I'll be honest, I didn't really want to watch the tag title match. And yeah. I'm more into it as a result Yeah, you're right. So, like, fair play to them for that too. Uh, yeah, after the match, the elite are just sort of getting out of there, bailing through the crowd... Out comes the acclaimed and daddy ass Max Caster uh, talks about the royal family showing up today as the court jesters, FTR, and his two favourite princesses, the Young Bucks, are there. Um, the acclaimed of the kings, Caster said he's the best wrestler alive. Uh, the Bucks couldn't be the acclaimed last week and are all in. The belts come home. Uh, Bowen said they've got nothing left to prove. Uh, FTR and the Young Bucks can't beat them. They are going to fight uh, until they are the next AW Tag Team Champions. Not a push, shut up. Everybody loves the acclaimed. And uh, Billy Gunn says, the old, if you don't like that, we've got two words for you. Don't just sing me, yeah. <laughs> It's not exactly that, but it is implied. Five words. Uh, yeah, still, still one of my favourite moments in wrestling history is Paul Heyman to Edge, ECW <laughs> Arena. I've got two words for you. Matt freaking Hardy, be a spit. That's three words. Three words. Uh, the acclaim got booed here. Mm. And is that a sign of things to come at Wembley? Does everyone love the Eclair? Everyone loves uh, a Max Caster rap uh, post. Maybe they were chanting Sweet Chin Disco. That's probably it. Sweet Chin Disco chants. I was chanting Boo Ernst. <laughs> but just makes me wonder, like, over time, we said the pops have diminished and maybe and the, and the raps for them. have sort of stopped. So that, like, that big crowd pleasing element has gone. Billy Gunn. Always feels like he's out staying his welcome, realistically. Mm-hmm. Like, could the match, especially with it being a like a triple threat or a three-way, excuse me, be like the, an opportune way to turn them heel? Yeah. Because you can just slot FTR in as the default baby faces. Yes. And the Young Bucks are obviously going to be heels. So the fact that the acclaimed get to almost like pick a lane might help. That's a good point, that. yeah. Just felt like that was where this is all... Ultimate, even if it wasn't necessarily in the plans initially. Yeah, I think it feels like where it's the naturally headed. Post, post yeah. all in, you're right. Um, post switch and disco switch switch and disco I I need to dig out that I definitely tweeted years and years ago at some point I'm going to scissor the acclaim the world will rejoice and fingers crossed well fingers scissored they can't scissor if they cross tickets aren't available right now but they were available on the on the night tickets are still available for our live show whatculture.com forward slash tickets right the closing thing in the show the final hmm? is it docking I don't know um, oh, words for everything now. It's the showdown, the final showdown, the final countdown for uh, Swerve versus Brian Danielson on Sunday, of course. And who better to host? So, five Will Ospreay punches 
on MJF is the same price as yes. prices in Europe That's for good point. Wembley. Is that right? Half a million or something like that. Something it? like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, the impartial Nigel McGillis is is hosting McGillis. McGillis. Nigel McGillis. Nigel McGillis. Nigel McGillis. The era of McGillis. Apologies, Nigel. Uh, this is the era of a close-up magic. I think he's got a show moustache, and now it's gone. <laughs> it's in the thumbnail. Nigel McGuinness hosts. He pulls a rabbit out of the hat. He he, uh, he does a brilliant introduction for Swerve. I was kind of <laughs> hoping that he, he goes on Wikipedia for All In, and he says, "AW, is this your card?" I was kind of hoping he was going to do an introduction for for. Uh, Brian Anderson, or do like you know the big thing that he did here, like ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated man who undefeated over the last few, last year, the franchise player, the most dangerous man in AW, Swerve Strickland. He comes out, Prince. And I, I really hope he was going to be and Brian Anderson. Yeah, <laughs> he's there and all. Uh, huge Swerve's house chat. Who's house? Swerve's house. Okay. Um, and then he goes, oh, no, Brian Anderson. Actually, no. Before I do that, I want to shake your hand, Swerve. <laughs> Uh, some people, a lot of people, everybody actually can call him Brittle Brian, the neck break kid. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're We're all the... saying it. What you heard? Everyone's calling me Spud. Everyone's <laughs> been saying it. So. <laughs> Strickland, you're in the swerve. You're in the shape of your life. Shout out to my friend Martin if he's watching. He won't be. He just he tried that. And people, <laughs> people started calling me the big dog. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't met. Everyone's saying it. But he did buy Kerrang! And he would bring it in and we would share it in reception. So I always appreciate that. Reception? Like, reception? Reception? No, registration, excuse me. Oh, I was going to say. Read, <laughs> we're going to read Kerrang! as four-year-olds. In a Slipknot gig. <laughs> I was going to say, somebody was at a Slipknot gig. Who was that? Hey, I've got to say, no, Sherlock's daughter, general manager at NXT. Right. Fucking cool of the year as well. Uh, anyway, Nigel, hard-hitting journalist, is, says, how does it feel to be an overwhelming favourite? Your career's a runaway train. <laughs> uh, Swerve says he's the most dangerous man due to the pain he endures and inflicts to be the AW world champion. He runs down the list of victims. It's nice to do this as a reminder yeah. of like, he's had a hell of a run mm -hmm. if it all comes to an end on Sunday. Hangman Page twice, Jay White, Takeshita, Samoa Joe, Claudio, Christian Cage, and of course, Will Ospreay said he's going to dissect Danielson from head to toe. Um, he appreciates... Danielson, generational talent, uh, Pacific Northwestern, and just like me, uh, but I still feel disrespected by him. He says uh, he's ready to retire and go off into the sunset. No, you're not taking that moment from me. I'm taking it from you, Brian. Uh, I will make sure you never get back in the ring again. If you do get the itch again, I'm going to be there. It's an indie show in the Northwest, or you want to go to Arena Mexico under a mask, I'm going to be there to beat you down. Even if you're at home with your wife and kids, and you get the itch to get back in the ring, guess where I'm going to be? And this, of course, brings out Brian Danielson, who sprints down to the ring, Busaiku, Nita, Strickland, uh, Nana, and McGuinness, Bale, and my God, preemptive. Oh, my God. This mm -hmm. promo. I didn't need any more encouragement. I was already more than excited yeah. for the main event on, on Sunday. Uh, but he says, maybe you're confused, Swerve. A lot of people are. I don't come out for 20 minutes weekly to talk about myself, but I know the truth. I know who I am. I know a lot of people say it, throw it around like it's some sort of token or catchphrase, but this is the truth. I am the best f***ing wrestler in the world. And I have been for the last 20 years, he says. Sorry, I'm just going to write down that swear so I don't get in trouble. He didn't I don't remember him part. saying that, yeah. Um, was, uh, fair play to him, though, like for helping the ITV fall up with their beats. Uh, Swerve thinks he's going to beat him, retire him, cripple him in front of his daughter. No. This Sunday in front of the fans who paid to see him for the last 25 years, for the, his peers who he's travelled the road with for the last 25 years, for the Ryback in front of his family, his wife, his son, his daughter. Swerve's going to cripple him. Well, he's going to have to damn near kill him because Brian will leave his soul in this ring. Tonight, there's been a lot of talking and fighting. There is only one, que one question left. Can Brian Danielson, the American f***ing dragon... Beat Swerve Strickland for the AEW World Championship and the whole arena. Yes, 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 yes. What's so the big show got to do with it? Great line from commentary as, as the show closed here. The American dragon has awoken. Jesus Christ, in, and is ready for all in, as we all are. No notes. This was the stuff. This was this was the real shit, wasn't it? Like yeah. The, the world title, the career, the legacy of just a perennial favourite, um, as you pointed out before, Danielson even got on the microphone. Swerve Strickland's 
career in review, but couldn't have come across any less like a Miz Wikipedia recap. Yeah. Which is a hard, as we've seen, hard tightrope to walk, and he nailed it. Um, oh, yeah. Danielson's words were... He was saying nothing and saying everything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There was like, he basically, without, like, other than putting the F word in a couple of times. It didn't feel cheap, though. Said his, no, definitely not. God, no. But other than putting the F word in, said his name, said who he is, Mm -hmm. said he'll win. If you really break it down. It's like the most purest baby face. I'm doing this for me, my family, and my legacy sort of thing. This is my motivation. This is what I'm going to do. Like, we can do away with all the sort of the extra. We can do away with the... He's not saying it outright, but, like, we can... Like, on this show tonight, there's been a lot of talking and... Uh, 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 like, this was... Everything he was saying was just ultimately, I don't want to really talk anymore, and this is the fight you've gotten yourself in. He's had to listen to Swerve doing his own version of that week after week. Swerve has been pretty violent in tone in the way that he's illustrated the things he wants to do mm. to Brian Danielson. And he's even now physically attacked him last week after the We Leave match. This was Danielson saying, I don't really need to do that. Like you should know after 25 years what you're getting into with me. I cannot wait for this. I'm pretty sure Danielson will win, but I'm recording a predictions video with Phil later on and mm. I might have already changed my mind by the time we get in front of that <laughs> camera. We're probably going to do a preview of this show at the What Culture Live show, whatculture.com yeah. forward slash tickets, and I might have changed my mind yet again. I think this title versus career stipulation is just like completely ticked this over the edge. Mm-hmm. I think the building is going to be on fire. Like by the time main event comes around, I don't think there's going to be any sort of pay-per-view exhaustion or anything. No, like no, no, it's no. It's going to be white hot in that building, in that stadium. Um, this was the sort of promo that made me feel privileged to be in attendance for the match I'm about to watch. Agreed. Uh, if there are people still wanting to buy a ticket, this will sell them it. Um, pay-per-view, if you can even still buy it. it just You are going to want to be seated for this. Mm. And both men couldn't have done a better job. The biggest match and the biggest show of the year. And this is, you know, this was the frigging, you think you're special. Somebody should knock it up now. Yeah. That's how, that's, that's how it felt. Yeah, I agree. A great spot as well by uh, Adam Blair just seen on his uh, X page, at Adam Wilton 4. There is Brian Danielson cutting this promo. I'm the best flipping wrestler in the world. I'm not going to make any more work for myself. There he is cutting that promo, yeah? Mm-hmm. Look at him there in that lovely green plaid shirt. Oh, I think I know where this is going. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. so, uh, the retirement take, promo. You want to take us through what we're looking at here? Uh, this is from, yeah, um, Panda Blair, who's noted that Brian wore something very similar to this the first time he retired, of course, with Aubrey Edwards in attendance. I think that's yes. Awesome, isn't it? Um, when he's obviously back into WWE in 2016 when he's looking absolutely devastated. Um, so he could be foreshadowing that this was his actual second retirement uh, speech if he loses. Cause I, I said this to Scott. It's like, could lose. It, it's a cool thing to say to be like, I was there for Sting's last match. I was there for Brian Danielson's last match. Well, I don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, but if he loses, when everybody has finished crying, it's Birdie getting her dad back. And everyone else to switch in disco. And, well, yeah, probably not Birdie. Probably not Brian, actually. Ah, not good on Brian. Yeah, I'm Brian. There's tickets at the door. I have those, uh, who's, see him eating the fruit pastels ice lolly. He shoots on Percy Biggs, actually. No, screw that guy. I want Swerve to win. What? Yeah, I mean, wait a minute. So, but everything you've said there makes me want to watch a video, and I don't even know what the video is yet. It's like Sport Bible, I think, did a, oh, try some British snacks right. with some American snacks. Okay, how, why do we not do this content, by the way? I know. Uh, well, just us. Yeah. <laughs> British dry British snacks. Mm, I love this. Uh, yeah, dinner. Dinner, dinner with what culture? We, uh, he, Craig's again. The reason I saw it is because he was having a fruit, you know, fruit pastels ice lolly. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, love them. And he was, he preferred like Ben and Jerry's ice cream or some loser. He should love that because he's like, uh, healthy. Right. But he said, they said, oh yeah, no, um, we tried this. He said, oh, I think they're talking about like, oh, who else has done this? And they said, oh yeah, Ice Spice was a big fan of it. And he went, who's that? And he went, I thought it was one of the Spice Girls. Who's Ice Spice? Like a musician. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't... Okay. I, I knew she wasn't one of the Spice Girls. He, he, Brian's been silly. Yeah. Well, else did, I'm sorry, he really got me on the hook with this snack. But he, uh, really the, he had nerds and Percy Pigs, and he did not like the Percy Pigs. Why? Percy Pigs are, like... I always feel like I'm betraying my class getting food from Marks and Spencer's. It is, but yeah. yeah it's it's a worth, big treat, isn't it? Percy Pigs is worth a, worth a trip. On the bones of you, bum, it's obviously Skittles chewies because they're affordable and delicious. You love... Do you like every variant of Skittles? Do you like the... Mm. I like those clouds. I'm not a huge clouds fan, but if, if it's the last thing in the shop, I'll buy it, obviously. Yeah. Last thing in the shop. <laughs> I 
I'm the sorry. Last, I'm last. sorry, Mr. Wilbon. We've sold out of all the food apart from these Skittles. Clearly. The last, the last, uh, the last Skittles option in the shop. I mean, you remember anything else Brian tried? No, yeah, he didn't like nerds. No, he, he liked nerds. He, I think he was he, he, the oh, nerds for the American right. thing. So. Love nerds. Not over, not nerds over Percy Pigs. Mm. Oh, no, Percy Pigs probably. Well, let us know your thoughts on that. Uh, and he wants remember millions. Like, Oh my god! My, uh, youngest, both out of water. my youngest Alton Towers, we got him. They still do him well. He, uh, he wanted a treat from the gift shop, and we're like, "Well, there's all these toys." And then he saw this like column the, the, of oh, millions. They used to have that in Wilco, like twenty flavors. And he got this big tube, and you could fill it with like any like, rainbow each. effect. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Remember each one, and his, uh, his millions on. Well. Discuss that in the comment section, or if you want to talk about, you know, the go home show for all in uh, for AW, you can do that as well, or on X at What Culture WWE. Enjoy this. It's really, uh, it's really nice to be back. Yeah, it's nice to have you back. Watch, well, they can follow both of us. You can follow Michael Hamflet at Michael Hamflet. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. Follow our brilliant producer at It's Adam Nicholas, and subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts and all the fallout from all in when we're going to be there in attendance. I'm so excited. Join us for the live show beforehand. Whatculture.com forward slash tickets and join us for Sweet Chin Disco after All In. If you're going to All In, we will see you there. But for now, this will be the Dynamite Review. My thanks to Hamlet, to uh, Adam Nicholas. Thank you for joining us and we will see you soon.